So every couple of months, an article like this comes out. Kotaku Game Diary. I should stop quitting games at boss fights. So what's going on here is they've done this so many times. If you remember, Seriku came out around the springtime. That's a From Software game. When you buy a From Software game, you know what you're getting. A brutally hard game that feels rewarding when you play it. I mean, anybody who's ever played Dark Souls and is a Dark Souls fan knows how great it feels, you know, when you're trying sometimes for an hour or so, maybe even more, maybe a whole day to beat a boss, and you finally beat it. You get this really good sense of accomplishment. Like, man, I did, I earned that win. Because those games are brutally tough, but fair. Tough, but fair. I think I, I read that somewhere. Somebody said about them. I think it was in a Remnant from Ashes review. It said Dark Souls was tough, but fair, which is very true. It's a very good statement that I liked. However, when it comes to areas like when it comes to outlets like Kotaku and Polygon, they never have that that idea. They just want to, I just want to play through the story. Dark Souls should have an easy mode. Seraku should have an easy mode. What about the, what about the disabled people? Huh? What about the disabled? They're ableist. It's ableism now. <laughs> They're always complaining. It's always some kind of ist or phobe, ism. Something. If they don't like it, slap it with a label. Slap, slap, slap it with a label. Give it up there. That way, you, that way they can be what they really want to be. Activists. That was a big thing. Polygon, Kotaku, BuzzFeed, all those outlets were coming out. Are games perpetuating ableism? That was a big thing for like three months. They were pushing for that. And what was really great, you had a lot of these handicapped people coming out and saying, you know, don't tell me how I'm supposed to play games or enjoy games. That was beautiful when that happened. MTV was pushing it too, I think. It was, was, why aren't you making music, you know? And it's really funny when you see them talking about boss fights because boss fights are the point in the game where you are supposed to bring the mechanics together. In fact, a lot of games... The boss fights are the highlights of the game, like a good, fun boss fight. But, of course, they don't want that. They just want to play the story. I just want to get through the story. So let's go through this uh, game activist Riley McLeod's article here. It should be a good laugh. We'll have a good time. We'll make fun of it. It'll be great. So he starts it off saying, I finally got a chance to boot up Control a couple of days after the game launched, since it was late at night, I only had a cup. I only had a little time to explore its unsettling world before I had to go to bed. I quit at the game's first boss fight, intending to play more later. Instead, I spent the next several days avoiding the game because I knew I had a boss fight waiting for me when I returned. So why do you play games? Why don't you play Minecraft or Sim City or or something? You probably complain about Sims. I can't manage the budget. <laughs> The budget's too complicated. <laughs> These people, they'll always find a reason to get mad at a game. You need to enjoy it at my level. I don't really like boss fights. Some of this is a function of writing about games for a living. When reviewing a game, repeatedly throwing myself at a boss fight takes time that could be better spent at moving through a game's story. Newsflash, you're not a movie critic. You're not a book reviewer. <laughs> you review games. I'm so sorry that you can't just play through the game story. Maybe you should play your way into a different job. Because clearly, it's not about the game story. There's so much more. to Like, what are you going to play? Are you playing Dark Souls for the story? You have to actually go out of your way to learn the story of that game. You got to grab all the items, read all the lore behind it. You have to, like, piece together the story of that game. So certain games, when you're reviewing them, like you, the story isn't the focus. The focus is the gameplay. And I would argue the gameplay should always be the focus of everything. Because while story is important, this isn't a movie. This is a video game. Gameplay drives it. So, yes, I'm sorry that you have to sit there and review the boss fight. And that you can't get a game out sooner 
where more experienced, better people that actually play video games are beating you to the review? Because that's what this is. That's what it, my argument has always been on these game activists, that they want easier modes so that they can breeze through the game so they can get the early clicks for a review. Because, you know, I mean, let's face it. When people are looking for a video game review, they're looking like the day before or you know, the day the game releases so that they can get an idea of what they're going into. And they're not going to get those clicks. How are they going to get those clicks? Well, they have to use stuff like this. I'm not giving them the click. I'm going to put the archive link in the description so you can read it. It'll be under trash, not source, trash. So goes on to say, I, I feel clever when I first figure out a boss's patterns. But I find these fights tedious once I know what to do. Watching a boss's health bar slowly tick down reminds me of running on a treadmill at the gym. There's nothing to do but repeat the same actions while I counter incrementally moves. Oh, nice that he's using incrementally. Got a pseudo-intellectual here. Watch out! He knows what he's talking about. Wants you to know he opened up Webster's before he wrote the review. Funny, he's like... It is no fun in a boss fight, though. I find that funny because boss fights are usually the most fun in a good game. Like, it's usually something, if it's done right, you remember fondly and you go back and play. I've played, man, so many, I've replayed final boss fights so many times. Particularly, I remember in uh, Breath of the Wild, I played that final bite, that final uh, Ganon fight probably like four or five times. Had a good time. I'm sorry that you don't enjoy video games. Uh, what was this guy's name again? Riley. I'm sorry that you don't enjoy video games. Sorry. You're in the wrong job, clearly, because all you ever do is write about how, how much you hate playing games. It's too hard for me. It's just too hard. I'm sorry you're in the wrong job. Maybe you should get a new job. Why don't you go start a book review club? You can just read through that with your buddies. Maybe do a blog on it. Let people know how much you like the story. So anyway, I get frustrated if I make progress only to lose it all at a silly mistake or badly timed button press, which makes me play worse on the next go. Often I grow too aware of my own gameplay because I don't want to mess up, which of course makes me mess up. I'm especially annoyed when I, have to, to, when I have to complete a boss fight in progress, because then there's nothing to do but try something over and over again until I get it right. Welcome to, uh, <laughs> welcome to hard work. I know that's something you're not used to, but unfortunately, this is why usually it's best to hire gamers to review games, because then they'll have a good time playing the game, and they won't whine about it about how hard it is and how it needs to be easier. Uh, they'll just play the game. I think this is why Dark Souls has such a huge following because usually hardcore gamers like a challenge, and that's all those games are, are challenge. So anyway, usually I'll take a break, sometimes quitting the game for a day. It's actually good advice. I've done that before. Did it many times in Seriku because I got frustrated, particularly that stupid old lady in the burning barn, when you're trying to fight her, man, it took me two days to beat that lady. Two days. But I didn't go down there and make hope. I'm so, I'm so mad. That stupid lady. Now I went back and eventually I beat it. And I felt very accomplished. I think that's what you're missing from this is the accomplishment that you're supposed to feel. So when I come back fresh, a boss fight is always easy to beat. Yeah, because you're not frustrated. That's the point. But, you know, of course, that's, that's a problem. The trouble with this strategy is it means that when I boot up a game again, the first thing I have to do is a boss fight. <laughs> it's not the most pleasant way to regain my bones, and it's not too fun to have to start a gameplay session doing something I don't enjoy. Then don't play games. Stop playing video games, or at least video games with bosses. Play Minecraft or Tetris. But I'm sure you'll find reasons to be mad about that too. In control, I quit for the night after struggling a bit with the first, with the fight against Tomasi, a possessed bureau staffer who can fly. 
It's a very early fight, shortly after Jesse gets the ability to telekinetically throw things. It isn't too tough, but I keep losing track of the guards that filter in or getting, or getting too far out of cover attempting to hit Tomasi with the breeze. Uh, well, the whole point of fighting that boss right after, I know this is crazy, but right after you get that ability is to, well, help you learn the ability and master it and to make sure it's like a review of the mechanics. Of course, who am I to give you this advice? I mean, you're the game journalist. You already knew that, didn't you? So I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I uh, corrected you. I also fumbled with the game's keyboard controls. On PC, control defaults your powers to holding and releasing the E key. An awkward placement that impeded my movement. Uh, you know, you can change those in the settings. Just a uh, crazy idea. I mean, I know it might take you two seconds to do it. But you can change those. You can customize where you have keys. Just saying. I mean, I know that's a crazy idea, but... This, plus the time pressure of knowing it was getting later and later, quickly frustrated me. And I gave the boss fight only a few tries before quitting. Having a boss fight to deal with the moment I loaded up the game again kept me away from it for several days. How to beat the fight was obvious and fairly simple. I just didn't particularly want to do it. Knowing, I have to st knowing I'd have to start right up with an unpleasant challenge made control feel like a chore. My friends and Kotaku colleagues raved about the game, which made me ache to play it. But every night for the rest of the week, I'd look at the game library, remember the boss fight was waiting for me, and change my mind. I even thought about restarting the game with a controller, just so I could do something more fun than darting around in an arena, throwing furniture and looking for guards with the while Tomasi's health bar slowly ticked down. Because you're terrible at the game, that's why your health bar was slowly ticking down. But, what's the thing here? I want the game to be easier so I can talk about it with my friends. I mean, just maybe just don't play the game. You know? Maybe don't play the game. You don't have to play the game. You know, you could sit there and listen to the conversation and ask questions. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But <laughs> apparently this game's just not for you. But it doesn't matter if it's just not for them, right? It needs to be for them. It's very narcissistic the way that they think. Like, everything has to be for everyone. I'm not enjoying it. Therefore, you are not allowed to enjoy it. It's pretty much the argument that they always make. They don't want to say that. Of course, they want to hide it behind ism, phobes, and is. That way, you know... It looks more like they're doing the right thing, and it's it's for other people. But really, it's always selfish reasons. I loaded up control this morning, popping it into the offices outside of Tomasi, outside the Tomasi fight with dread. I poked into the game's menu and saw that the game binds your powers to the little mouse button as well as E. <gasps> so you could have avoided all the problems if you had just looked at the menu in key bindings, and you would have seen that you could have used that mouse button the whole time. Well, really, you're just stupid. This is your own fault for writing this, because you would. it sounds like you would have beat the boss right away had you just pressed the menu button, whatever it is, and, uh, Final, and Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, the menu button is the V. Uh, it told me to save the game, and I was trying to figure out where is the menu button. So you know what I did? I pressed Escape, and it took me to key bindings, and then I saw that the menu was the letter V. I pressed V, and the game opened up the menu. It's amazing. I know it's it's crazy. It's crazy, but it works. My middle button is a little sticky, so it's not my favorite binding, but it was a more comfortable and tactical way to play. This made the fight infinitely easier, and I completed it on my second try. <laughs> of course you did. Uh, if you'd have just taken some time to review the keys... Before you played the game, uh, this entire article here wouldn't have been written. <laughs> but then you wouldn't have a reason to complain. So, not sure. Of course, this meant I instantly wanted to keep playing, only have to, only to have to get to work instead. I regretted how much of my previous free time I had spent avoiding control because I didn't want to play the boss fight. Taking a break in a game is usually a good idea when I'm stuck. But I've played games long enough to know quitting at a boss fight isn't going to keep me away from a game. It sounds like it has. Uh, I highly doubt you've been playing games a long time as well. 
I, for some reason, just doubt that. Like I said, these people aren't really gamers. They're activists. I don't know why I keep thinking I'd wake up as a person who'd find boss fights compelling instead of dull. When I get bored or frustrated with a boss fight, I remind myself that it would be better to just dig in and try to complete the fight or to save and quit when I can sense a boss fight coming so I'll have something else to do at the start of a play session. But instead, I inevitably try a few times and then quit, even though I know I'll have to do it later. I'm looking forward to, complain to playing more control, though I know there will be a bo more boss fights to come. Oh no. Oh no! Maybe I'll just take my own advice in the future and quit the game without leaving myself a boss fight. I know myself well enough to doubt this, though. Probably, like, when I play a boss fight themselves, I'll keep making the same mistake. So the guy hates boss fights. I find it really funny, though, that he complains about using the E button. Then he's like, oh, I figured out that the middle, the middle mouse button works. You could have just checked the menu, saw the hotkeys... Or you could just hotkey it. I mean, I have I have six keys on the side of my keyboard where I can just bind things. And let me tell you, they work well. My mouse has special buttons on the side of it where I can move buttons to it and stuff like that. Like, it's kind of nice. You can pretty much customize, especially if you're on PC, your whole experience. Which tells me this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Like most of these people. And it's really funny. You always see hot takes like this coming out of Kotaku or Polygon. It's, it's really never anybody else. IGN once in a while will. But it's usually always out of Kotaku and Polygon. Where you see, you know, we've got to make games easier. Games got to be easy. You know, you 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 like hard games. You're an ableist. <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget the Dark Souls thing. And there'll be more. You wait till... Uh, Elden Ring comes out next year, whenever that's coming out. The George R. R. Martin collab with uh, From Software. It's going to be like essentially Dark Souls, but with Game of Thrones uh, influences. That's what it sounds like. You wait, because that game is going to be brutally tough. You know it is. And all these people are going to come, it's too hard. What if I was in a wheelchair? I couldn't, if I could play this game as good. It's, it's so weird, these people. But it's really funny to make fun of them. But at the end of the day, uh, they're kind of scary, too, because they have power to change. I'm surprised. Like, they pushed hard to get an easy mode in Seraku. They pushed real hard to get one and didn't get it. Thankfully, from softwares from Japan, and they usually don't bend the knee like that. But had that been an American company, I wonder if they could have got them to insert one. Defeats the entire purpose of... Of a game like Serico or Dark Souls to have an easy mode. But they don't get that. Because they're not real gamers. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts on this trash fire. If you want to read it yourself, it'll be under trash in the description. And uh, that's pretty much it. Make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Share the video. And uh, check out my Twitch where we actually will play games and enjoy them. And not say that they need to be easier for people in wheelchairs. Peace.